Uh, I'm Rafael Fonseca from the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. I want to tell you about potential uses uh, for MRD determination to change therapy. I think at this point it's very clear. Achievement of MRD negativity is the most important prognostic factor uh, for multiple myeloma. And uh, that in and of itself is critical important. It won't be the focus of my talk, but just think about this from a patient perspective. If you're able to achieve that MRD negativity, you want to know. The outcomes are much, much better if you, if, if you reach that point. And the, the next question is, uh, you know, what do we do with this information as we think about quote unquote changing therapy? And I'll give you two examples of, of how I think we can use that. First would be in patients who are on long-term maintenance treatment, uh, particularly in patients who are in a CR. And, uh, you know, after two years and three years, the conversation usually starts of, do we continue therapy, do we keep going? The ideal world with a magic wand, with a pill that has no side effects, you probably go forever. But in the real world, this is associated with fatigue, diarrhea, and a number of other complications. How I bring it into the conversation is we do uh, bone marrows in patients who are in long-term uh, maintenance, who are um, in CR, and with that, we monitor their MRD status. And I would argue that for a patient who has a sustained MRD negative status, who, for instance, is experiencing significant burden of symptoms because of maintenance therapy, this would be one more piece of information that might allow them to make the decision to say, I'm just gonna stay on treatment. This is the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop treatment because it's gonna be important for me. Um, contrary, you know, if you have a patient who's still MRD positive but is doing well, maybe they would like to stay for longer on, on, on treatment. And, and we don't have guidelines. It will be impossible to have the complete uh, uh, resolution for every single possible clinical scenario. But I always say, we can bring this into the conversation much like we bring any other biomarker. I think a mistake is to try to think of MRD as something exceptional. Something, I make the analogy like the Supreme Court. So whatever MRD says we're gonna do, I don't think that's the case. It's just a more informed clinical decision process. So that would be one example. The second one, which I think is very important, there are multiple lines of evidence and multiple studies that are showing that getting that MRD negativity is important and is associated with good long-term outcomes. But importantly, there's several studies that have shown that it doesn't matter when you get there, whether you get that post-transplant or even if you get it a year later. So two, two examples that come to mind are the, the paper by Dr. Perot that was published in Blood in 2018 and then the paper by uh, Dr. Goicochea, which essentially show the same thing, just get to that MRD negativity. I always remind people, there's nothing magical of why we do four cycles and then we do transplant. It didn't come from a place of great wisdom as being the best therapy available, it's simply a historical practice. And given what we know now, that it seems to be important to make patients negative, I kind of use the phrase, let's finish the job. Or with patients, we gotta polish what we're doing, and if at all possible, and we can convert you to MRD negative, we should try to do so. I will underscore and, power and say that, of course, safely, and, and, and this needs to be an informed conversation with the patient, this is not something for which there is uh, agreement within the community, but also based on the work of Dr. Perot, we know, for instance, if you're high-risk uh, cytogenetics myeloma and you don't become negative, you have a very, very high risk of, of early relapse. Furthermore, she showed that if you have high-risk cytogenetic markers and you're able to make this uh, become negative, then the results are better than if your standard risk can remain positive. Now, if you're thinking, well, maybe this is just biology. Some patients are destined to do well. There's no question there's a contribution like that. But on the other hand, if you just plot what has happened with MRD over the last 10 years, it's just a incredible growth in the fraction of patients that become MRD negative with our available therapy. So I don't think we have to uh, you know, stop short of getting to where we want to go and in a safe way trying to achieve MRD negativity seems to be a good reason uh, to, in, to intensify and perhaps change or continue with treatment.